We really wanted to bring you a first-hand account of what it was like to be in the middle of all of this overnight. So News 4's Laura Hedegar started working at 8 o'clock last night. She's the only morning reporter who really spent a lot of her night on the streets in Ferguson among the crowds of people. Laura kicks off our team coverage this morning live in Ferguson. Laura. And Claire, it was really an eye-opening night for me because when I got to that protest, I was expecting to see so many of the images many of our viewers have grown accustomed to seeing this week. Police in tactical gear, violent riots, and really mass confusion. From what I saw, though, that was not the case. You see, ain't nobody out here fighting. Everybody's out here for Michael Brown. Everybody's kind of running around doing their own thing, but they're not angry. Last night they were angry and they were ready to just, they're ready to fight. From fighting on Wednesday to a sense of freedom on Thursday. I thought it was going to be violent. I thought I expected police officers. I expected like it was the night before, but it's not like that. It's much more peaceful. A parade of cars, loud honking, and large crowds at night might not seem all that peaceful to you, but it sure is to all of these folks in Ferguson. The protesters are the ones that are keeping the peace, that are controlling traffic, and that's how it should be done. In the entire three and a half hours I reported through the protest, there was only one moment that I and everyone else I talked to was scared. We just so happened to catch it on camera. I live in Greenville now, and I work in Three distinctive pops sound so familiar to so many in this area. Luckily, turned out to be a false alarm. No firecrackers, everybody. Protesters tell us that they are sorry about the looting and the damage to all the businesses, but they also say the only reason all this is able to happen is because of a change in the way Ferguson is being policed. People were just saying thanks for allowing us to uh, uh, speak and without uh, fear of tear gas and some of those things, and, and so, uh, and I want them to speak and, and I want to hear what they say, but I also ask them we have to do it in a peaceful way. That is Captain Ron Johnson, now the man in charge of all of this, and he's going to have a busy day. Why? Because county police just told me there were five incidents overnight in which they could not respond. I'll explain more of that coming up at 6.30. Emily and Claire, back to you. I made it a point last night walking through that protest to talk to as many people as I could. So I saw a group very close to West Florissant and Canfield Drive, started talking to them, come to find out this was one of Mike Brown's very good friends. In fact, one of the people he graduated with from Normandy High school. He tells me he saw Mike Brown just one week ago today, last Friday. That is the day before Mike died. He tells me that Mike was really into music. He wanted to be a rapper. And he also tells me that the very last words he ever said to his friend was, quote, be safe. And he is still surprised that all of this has happened. Did you ever think that your graduating class, someone from your graduating class, would have an impact around the world that he has. No, that's why it's so crazy, and it's like happened right outside my house. That's why it's so crazy because it's somebody I know. Like this just happened with Trayvon Moore, Emmett Till, Oscar Grant, and now it happened with him. Somebody that I know, so it's crazy. Courtney Hudson is a lifelong resident of Ferguson, and he tells me the only way he thinks peace can come to his town is if the town wins, meaning the officer who shot and killed Mike Brown is arrested and charged with murder. In the process, you had a chance to talk with that captain, Captain Johnson, one on one. I did, Emily, but first off, there's a roll call going on behind me. This is my fifth morning in a row here, and this is the first time it's looked like that. Police in both blue and brown uniforms. That shows that county police are now working with Missouri Highway Patrol, and they are all under Captain Ron Johnson. I was here last night right around 11. I saw the captain, went up to him, introduced myself, asked him for an interview. He tells me he found out yesterday afternoon that he would soon be calling the shots here. For him, though, 
it's not just business, it's personal. Captain Johnson is a longtime North County resident, very familiar with this area and the people. And he tells me he's really fine with people peacefully protesting in the streets. I asked if those protesters will ever be met with tear gas under his watch. That is uh, so far out of my mind. I can't even answer that question. But I will say we do have, uh, have to protect the citizens that are at homes outside of this community, the citizens that are at homes within this community, the businesses that are here. Uh, but I think that uh, we have other means and measures that we're going to utilize. Now, I have just been told within the last hour, it really wasn't that quiet here in Ferguson overnight. But Claire and Emily, you know I cover crime all over the area, not just in North County. This is the first time I've ever had an officer walk up and give me an update. He says there was some type of situation last night with four men in a truck. They eventually got pulled over in Pine Lawn. When they did that, they ended up arresting several people who had weapons in the vehicle. It now sounds like all those weapons were confiscated. But I have more updates on other issues that happened here in Ferguson last night. I'll have an update for all of you on that coming up in about 15 minutes. More information on some documents that were released involving this case press conference I just told you about. Laura? And Mike, I am joining you from the Ferguson Police Department. A very different situation than what's happening where you are. The only people around me are different news stations giving updates. But Chief Jack Jackson did tell me within the hour that they should have more information for us in the next two hours. For now, though, let's lay out the strong arm robbery that police say Mike Brown committed just minutes before he was killed. Here are a series of surveillance pictures from inside the food mart on West Florissant last Saturday. Now, according to the incident report, around 11.50 a.m., Mike Brown and Dorian Johnson, they are naming both of them, went into that food mart. Brown took some cigars, passed them to Johnson, and told him to leave. The clerk told Brown he needed to pay for them. Then Brown reached across the counter, grabbed some more, and left the store. The clerk called 911 and tried to stop Brown from leaving. And you see in these pictures the size difference between these two. Keep in mind, Mike Brown is six feet, four inches tall. And according to the incident report, Brown grabbed the clerk's shirt and forced him into a display rack and then left. Now, once the 911 call went to dispatch, several officers responded to that, to that area to look for the suspects. And we do now know at least one of those officers was the one Mike Colombo was just talking about, Darren Wilson. We are still waiting to get his report on the shooting. We have not been given that yet. But according to a supplemental report, one officer viewed the surveillance video at the gas station and then also went to that shooting scene of Mike Brown and was able to confirm from the video to what he saw at that scene that it was the same person. Now, from the time Brown committed that strong arm robbery to when he was dead is less than 15 minutes. Reporting live from Ferguson Police Department, Laura Hedegar, News 4.